Hello everyone. Today I'm here with Detsi, going by your actual name is Vincent. Uh, I just found found out recently, but you're known by the nickname Detsi. Uh, what does it even mean? Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry if that's like mean or or something, but. Oh no! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Vincent is what most people in the real world call me, but I have very few real world friends left. You know, um, I've been in the gaming space for a very, very long time now, and most of my friends are like streamers or professional gamers, other content creators. Do you just like oh. not go outside anymore, like at all? <laughs> oh yeah. Really? Um, even even before the pandemic, I was living the quarantine life. You know, go outside once a month. <laughs> and uh, just live the absolute degenerate hours. So uh, I've been doing quarantine for probably about four years now. <laughs> wow. Mm -hmm. we, we're gonna get into the streaming and magic in a minute, but you know, j just so that people can get to know you a little bit better, let's just talk about like, you know, maybe other things. When I ask you, you said that you like anime. I actually like anime a lot too. So I'm curious to know uh, what kind of anime do you like? Oh man, so I've watched, I have watched so many anime, I've probably watched over a thousand. Oh really? Maybe Holy like, shit. Yeah, like a thousand series, and some of those are like Naruto, you know, I'm caught up on One Piece. Uh, I uh, Basically all of my free time, I like to watch uh, anime because it kind of lets me live this sort of life that um, I can't really live <laughs> in this life. I see. So, uh, did you see, like did you see No Game No Life? Because that kind of describes what you're saying. Yeah, I have seen that. Um, I, I've been waiting for season two for a long time. Yeah, but uh, I don't think it's that funny. is that basically personifies my <laughs> lifestyle. But uh, yeah, I, I I like I like so many different anime these days. Uh, I've watched so much anime that I <laughs> that I watch that I'm like very very um, picky about what I like. But you know. Most most anime out there are fun. So uh, you mentioned you, you mentioned One Piece, which is like one of the most famous animes. I I, I actually watched only fifty episodes and I didn't like it, which is weird because I uh -huh. like saw all of Naruto, Bleach, Hunter x Hunter, and this should be like similar. But I just didn't like uh -huh. it. Does it like get better with time, or what's going on with that? Like, yeah, I think one of the weird things about One Piece is that the characters are so weird. Mm -hmm. um, and it's it's hard for a lot of people to buy into it, but the sort of adventures that they go on and the sort of uh, search for freedom, you know, it's like they just want to be the freest people in the world and they just want to see and experience as much of the world as possible. That kind of speaks to the adventure in me mm -hmm. that I wish that I could go on these adventures, you know, I wish that I could experience all these things that um, other people especially haven't experienced. So uh, getting to know the characters, going along with them on their adventures, uh, One Piece makes One Piece one of my favorite animes of all time. What I didn't like about it was the fact that there's just like always an arc, right? There's like a new enemy and they de defeat that uh -huh. enemy and then like a new enemy shows up. And I just thought it was like kind of boring that it wasn't like, I mean, they're, they're looking for the, for the treasure or whatever, right? But uh -huh, yeah, I, I just thought that like it wasn't like as connected as much. So like after 30 episodes, you can basically start like watching all over again. Does that like change with time or is it still like new enemy, new enemy, new enemy? It, I mean, I mean, that's basically how it is the entire time. Uh, yeah, new enemy, new enemy. But uh, it's it's fun. It's fun. I think that um, maybe it's not for everybody, but I de definitely give it a chance if you haven't tried it. Mm hmm. So let's talk about uh, streaming a little bit. Actually, the first time I saw you streaming was probably like a year and a half ago. I had like no idea who you were and like I started watching. I was like super impressed how well you played. I think it was like a Ravnica, Guild of, Guilds of Ravnica Limited or something. I don't, I, don't, I don't really know, but like clearly if you were like a new player or an inexperienced player, you wouldn't draft the way you did. So I was just like very impressed. Yeah. I even asked you in chat how long you're playing and you said something like a couple of months or whatever. So I was like, Whoa, wow. Okay. Uh, was it maybe because you like played other games before or, or like how, how, how did you like become so good at magic? Like, yeah, you know, basically immediately. So um, I actually started quite a long time ago. Um, I started probably around Innistrad times, but there were a lot of, you know, dark ages throughout those years. Uh, I took some time off to play like professional Hearthstone 
and um, oh, really? you know, I took a long time off. Yeah, I, I, I I, I'm sorry. Let's, let's stop right there. Were okay, you okay. actually a professional Hearthstone player? I had no idea. Yeah, so a lot of my life was just uh, grinding Hearthstone and uh, traveling to Hearthstone events. Most of my friends these days, whether they play Hearthstone or not anymore, uh, they are they are uh, professional. They used to be professional Hearthstone players, or they're. Um, big name content creators that mm. uh, you'll see on Twitch. You know, maybe they're streaming some different game now. Can you but, mention um, some names that maybe people people can know? Yeah. So like, uh, Ali Straza is uh, one of my longtime friends. She's a Hearthstone and a Battleground streamer. She did Magic for a while as well. Uh, Show, one of my best friends in esports. Uh, he streams Battlegrounds now, but also was Magic for a while. Uh, Tyler OOTD, Hearthstone mm -hmm. Grandmaster from Vietnam. He's uh, he's like one of my best friends in esports. Uh, that's that's like the person I talk to the most off stream. Mm -hmm. So um, just a lot of history there with esports. Oh, sorry, my uh, my friend No Jenny No as well. Um, she she and I we've known each other for probably six or seven years in esports, and all of these connections are back from the Hearthstone days. Mm -hmm. So. Um, had a lot of time in Hearthstone. Some of the some of the time off from Magic as well was playing Mahjong. Like I love Japanese Mahjong Reach. I actually don't even know what it is. Can you maybe like explain for people who don't know? Yeah, so Mahjong it's like a four player game, and uh, they play with tiles. So it's like you, you might see those old uh, those old movies and stuff where people are like shuffling tiles around, and there's like the grandmother smoking outside of a building. With like a mod, like a green mahjong <laughs> table. Okay. Yeah, this game is awesome, awesome, and uh, there's so many different variants of it as well. Uh, there's the most popular one's probably Hong Kong mahjong, and uh, it's essentially a card game, but they use tiles, and they're like big tiles that make like really loud noises when you clank them together, and um, and you can put them upright, you know, so they're not like cards that you just hold in your hand. You have like a row uh, oh. on a table. Um, but really, really cool game. Uh, highly recommended for anyone who loves card games. You'll you'll instantly get addicted to Japanese mahjong. <laughs> Just one of the coolest games ever. I wait. Is it a is that, it a trading card game or is it are the cards like always the same? Yeah, the cards are always the same. Oh, okay, okay. So the tiles are essentially like a deck of cards. Oh, okay. I see. Okay. Yeah. Uh huh. So it's it's really cool because in, even though the cards don't change, um, there's just so much depth in the game, almost like uh, like think poker or anything like that. Even without new expansions, you know. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah. So I've been playing Magic for a long time, but took a long time off doing other stuff. But uh, coming back into Magic was something I never expected. I thought that. You know, my Magic time was done after I left Magic, but apparently people who play Magic are Magic players for life. So here I am, back to Twitch, Magic Arena, and uh, doing this full time. Was it, uh, what, what was the actual reason just like Magic Arena coming out or like, would you like maybe come back even even without it? Like, what do you think? Um, so part of it's Magic Arena, but I would say the number one reason I came back to Magic and to streaming was uh, my friend's show. So if you haven't checked out his channel, uh, twitch.tv slash sjow, he, mm -hmm. was, um, he was one of the biggest constructed streamers for a while in Magic, actually oh, really? for Magic Arena. Mm -hmm. But uh, now he does mostly Battlegrounds. But you know, he was like, hey, Desi, I want to learn drafting. I know that back in the day, you used to draft a lot. And uh, you know, c come on stream and teach me. And so little by little, I started getting back into Magic. This was, as you said, around Guilds of Ravnica. And um, it was uh, it was one of the most fun things that I'd missed for a long time. Just having fun playing with my playing magic with my friend, <laughs> <laughs> and I hadn't had that for a long time. So um, that was the reason I came back to uh, Magic: The Gathering. And um, it's interesting because even like say when I first started playing Magic, uh, limited drafting was all I cared about. Mm -hmm. uh, I I was like. I obviously wasn't as good back then as I w as I am now, but um, back then I used to like win GPTs and like uh, you know travel for like limited events, play on my F and M's and stuff, win my uh, win my pre releases and game days, basically magic for free, you know, just having boxes on boxes um, nonstop. So that was uh, how I used to live my life. Um, are, are are you now playing constructed as well, or is it always limited? Yeah, so these days I do not play constructed anymore. Mm -hmm. Back in the day, though, 
I I used to play a lot of constructed, but that's because limited players had to play constructed. Okay. You know, like you could draft maybe at your local game store once a week for the first few weeks, and then after that, like nobody wants to draft anymore. Everyone's playing constructed. Mm -hmm. So um, I used to play a lot, but only because I had to. I so see. now, since I don't have to, I don't play constructed anymore. Mm -hmm. So you came back to Magic, but like, you know, kind of immediately right after that, like Arena was released and you like started streaming. Is that correct? Yep. But mm -hmm. you weren't really like you were playing other games before, but you weren't streaming those games. So like, why did you start decided that you're gonna stream Magic Arena? Like, was there anything special about Magic in particular, or like, what happened there? Yeah, one of the interesting things is that I noticed that the discourse or the way that people talk about limited was really outdated. Mm -hmm. So um, most of the time people, even when a format would come back or a format's been out for a long time, people would refer to uh, to to the limited resources, kind of um, their card review mm -hmm. for ratings, you know? And obviously for anyone who's played Magic, after you play a set, you realize that there are a lot of things you got wrong. You realize that maybe after two or three weeks, something changes in the meta and cards are valued differently. And um, especially with the format we just had, Kaldheim, there were actually probably probably three or four moments when cards became valued differently as well. So limited is something that is ever changing. It's dynamic. Um, it's not something that's static. So. Uh, I wanted to kind of show the world, you know, how I play Magic, how I think about uh, Limited, and how I approach Limited, and I wanted to change the way that people talked about it. Mm -hmm. Um. So you just wanted to show the world, and that's why you started streaming, or like, what, you know? Yeah, kind kind of, kind of. So two things. So the first thing is that. Um, the reason why I streamed as well is because I couldn't find anyone who played Magic the way I wanted to play Magic. You know, like, I like being competitive, but I also like to mess around and stuff. I like to, sometimes when you get offered some sort of meme, you just kind of go for it. And uh, that's something that I didn't really see that much in uh, professional players, especially. You know, like, a lot of times professional players are going to be so uptight that they'll be like, no, 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 the, no, this card's just a meme, it's really, really bad. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's fun to win, but it's also fun to mess around. So, uh, I wanted to, you know, play Magic because, again, I can't really watch anyone uh, play the way I want. Mm -hmm. Secondly, um, I had just essentially quit Hearthstone, and I was in somewhat of a crisis, an <laughs> identity crisis, if you will. I was like, what in the world am I doing with my life? I had just graduated from university um, in from from the from the United Kingdom. And uh, now also my like even with a master's degree, uh, I'm not doing anything with it. And now I'm not competing in Hearthstone either. What am I going to do with my life? So um, I essentially committed to streaming every single day at the same time on Twitch, Magic, and seeing if that would get me anywhere, seeing if that could create a career for me. And luckily, luckily, um, my Magic streams were very successful, and we have an awesome community. Uh, two and a half years later, now I'm a full-time Magic the Gathering streamer, and uh, I love my job. <laughs> uh, did you, you, you said that you committed to stream every day since you started. Uh, did that actually, like, fulfill? Like, what, did that actually happen? Yeah, so I think it was about maybe six or seven months that I streamed every single day uh, without a day off. Mm -hmm. And I streamed at the same time every single day. It was partially a science experiment just to see how important consistency was, you know. Um, in addition to that, your, you know, your content also has to be good and it helped that I was playing at high ranks as well. So... Um, there were a lot of factors to the success, but I think that the biggest one is probably consistency. Um, mm -hmm. So, at least in the beginning, I just try to be as consistent as possible. Are you like, not? Are you not anymore? No, like these days. So, <laughs> whenever a new expansion comes out, I stream a lot. Uh -huh. I stream anywhere from like sixty to eighty hours a week. When a new expansion That's comes a lot. out, yeah. And it's basically play for you know 10, 12, 14 hours a day. Go brush my teeth wash my face, go to sleep, wake up, do the same thing. Um, 
But uh, during the off months a little bit, whenever Magic's a little bit slow, I try to spend only four days a week streaming. So that's going to be Friday through Monday. Mm -hmm. And then from Tuesday through Thursday, I, I try to fit in other stuff. So I just have so much sponsorship stuff and... You know, like having an interview with you, this is uh, something that um, <laughs> I'm very happy to do. Oh, but thank it does you. take it does take some time, and my off days are very important for the success of my stream, especially when um, my viewership is going to be a little bit lower. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing that I'm curious about is that you already kind of mentioned pros and like you, you like to be competitive. You're also like playing 12 hours a day, so you know I assume that you, you're definitely it's definitely at least at back of your mind like are you maybe thinking about going pro or are you just like focusing on this like are you even like playing like the qualifiers or pdqs uh what is going on with that yeah so i so on magic arena there's not much to qualify for but i do qualify for the uh, mythic invitational qualifiers every month mm -hmm. but uh i don't play in any of them because they're constructed oh. <laughs> so it's it's interesting i think that my goal in Magic is actually not to be competitive. Uh, even though, you know, I've been rank one Mythic um, in Limited probably like 30, 40 times or something. Mm -hmm. um, but my main goal is to be a content creator and eventually I would like to commentate tournaments. I love talking about Limited. I love, uh, you know, watching Limited. I love everything about Limited. But uh, in terms of competing, I am really, really sick of competitive gaming honestly i'm so sick of it back from my hearthstone days so whenever i'm playing a game and it feels like work to me i that's that's just one of the worst feelings for me so really being a competitive magic player is not on my to-do list uh but you know if there were like competitive limited stuff and i could use that as content for stream then mm -hmm. that'd be perfect so for example, um, on Magic Arena, there was recently a, uh, there was like a sealed arena open. And um, uh, I actually went 7-0 in the day two. So I qualified to day two and then I went 7-0 in day two. Had a really nutty pool, won $2,000 from that. But that, that was like the best viewership I've had in the last few months. Mm -hmm. So that's an example of kind of a competitive environment that I can also stream with as well. And it puts my focus first and foremost on me being a content creator. So in that sense, being competitive works for me. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you maybe think that potentially you're playing slightly worse? Because as you said, you don't really want to be that competitive anymore. It just seems like kind of hard for me to imagine that you would like really, really try your best, like especially in those like very tight spots. It's sometimes not necessarily fun to like, you know, go through all of it. And so are you just like the person that just does something that feels right? Or like, are you like really trying to play your best or you don't really care about that that much? So usually when I'm streaming, I would say that I'm not focusing that much on the game on most turns. But when it comes to the really, really important decisions, I do, you know, shift that focus from which which initially might have been like 60% focus on chat, 40% on game. I would shift. I'm very good at shifting that focus. So instead, it, it could be like, you know, 95% focus on the game and then 5% focus on chat. And um, the thing about Magic is that there are a lot of turns and decisions that are very important, but also there are a lot of turns that you don't really have uh, many real decisions. So as a streamer, it's important to kind of recognize when those turns are so that you can save your yeah. mental energy yeah. so I can stream for a long time. You know, cause you, cause I can't just stream for, you know, like, like uh, 12, 14 hours straight with having 100% focus on the game. But part of the beauty of Magic for me is actually making good plays and having good decision making, whether my deck is uh, a good deck or a bad deck. So I think that part of paying respect to my deck and to the game <laughs> and to my viewers is actually playing well. Like, I have to play well. Mm -hmm. That's something that um, I cannot, that I will not uh, compromise on. Mm -hmm. do you, are, are, anytime you're playing, your stream is on. Like, do you sometimes play when, when, when you know, no one's watching? So, in the last two years, I think, I have not played a single game of Magic Arena off stream. <laughs> wow. I do not, yeah. So, it's a little bit weird. It's part of the sort of transformation of uh, from a game that I used to play for fun for to a game that I play as a career. 
for, you know, for work on Twitch, is that it I I feel so guilty when I play Magic off stream. It's it, it's a really weird thing, but I just cannot. I think so, I understand. Yeah. Uh huh. So, um, I. I really, really just to try to keep magic uh, on stream, and that also helps me not burn out as much either. Because uh, if I if I'm playing magic, you know, like 12, 14 hours on stream, and then playing magic off stream, uh, there's just no way that I could keep it up. Mm -hmm. You you mentioned the the fact that you just like to be content creator, and that maybe eventually you would like to be a commentator as well. Um, are you like doing any? content besides streaming or are, are you like maybe thinking about doing some like maybe just like videos um i, I, I don't know like anything yeah um. so actually back in my hearthstone days uh one of the biggest things that i did was uh tournament commentating mm -hmm. so this is when i lived and went to school in in england and i was not only going to school but i was also uh working as a freelance commentator mm -hmm. so usually on the weekends and stuff um i would take a train or take an airplane out to some place in europe and um the studios would hire me to commentate hearthstone games uh so uh hearthstone games hearthstone tournaments mm -hmm. uh, in addition to that as well i uh, was a co-host for an esports tv show in london and we did that for about a year. So that was, um, so it, if you guys want to look it up on YouTube, it's called Jinx, G-I-N-X, Jinx TV's The Bridge. So a bridge, like a bridge over water. And we did that for a very, really, really long time. And it's just so much fun talking about games and, you know, just trying to see what's, uh, what's going on in not only card games, but other games as well. Um, at the moment, streaming is really the only thing I'm doing. Uh, streaming is my number one priority it's also the thing i have the most fun with but uh on the side i'm working on some other stuff i'm working on like merchandise uh we have a youtube channel that i'm trying to get up and going but it's a uh, very very small oh how is that um, going how is that going it's it's really difficult so i hired one of my moderators as a full-time youtube editor mm -hmm. you know and <laughs> he's basically doing everything and he's doing a really good job but at the same time my youtube is not growing as fast as my twitch is uh, which which is always strange because I I figure that you know if I have like a healthy successful Twitch stream that my YouTube would just naturally grow as well but it hasn't so uh, there's a lot of research to be done there but we're working hard on it so okay awesome well it was uh, fun talking to uh, talking with you today uh, thanks it was awesome uh, I don't I, I don't just want to cut it so maybe uh, you can tell people where they can find you on the internet uh, you know so that they they know where to find you. Yep. So you guys can find me anywhere, whether that's Twitch, Instagram, Twitter, or my YouTube at uh, Deathsy, D-E-A-T-H-S-I-E. -E. So uh, twitch.tv slash Deathsy and that and uh, basically all platforms I'm Deathsy. So thank you so much, Peter, for having me. Yeah. I appreciate it. If you guys like the video, please click on the like and subscribe button and I'll uh, see you next time. Bye.